Today on 10 Minute IT Jams, we're joined by David Colwell, who's the VP for Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning at TriCentis. TriCentis provides software testing automation and software quality assurance products for enterprise software. David joins us today to discuss the crucial role that AI plays in the testing market. Thanks for joining us today, David, and welcome to the jam. No problem, Mitch. Happy to be here. Fantastic. So um, just to start off, can you tell us a little bit about who Tricentis is and what you guys do? Sure. So Tricentis is uh, the leader in software test automation. We've been uh, nominated as leader by many of the largest vendors. So that's Gartner, Forrester, and Voke for many years now, the last like four or five years, depending on which uh, leader quadrant wave thingy you go with. Our mission since founding has been to enable organizations to move faster in the realm of testing, to, to be able to do more with less effort or to be able to do the same thing in a much quicker and more streamlined way. And over the course of the last, I don't know, 10 years, the definition of fast is kind of, it's changed and reshaped a little bit. It used to be that fast was deploying once every quarter, and that was considered like lightning quick. And then it was once every month, and now it's more than once every day. You're not really fast unless you're deploying every time someone pushes a commit many times a day. So as the definition of fast has changed, our mission has you know evolved with it. Our mission has remained to enable these organizations to move at incredible speed, but it's changed from just building tooling to be able to you know, let them do that on their own to making really expert tooling that enables them to take these uh, parts of their process that are blocking them, like testing being the primary one that we deal with, and shift them left. And the only way that we've been able to get from that kind of fast to really fast stage is by making the tools smarter with the use of artificial intelligence. So our mission has evolved from just enabling people to be smart using our tools to having tools that make people smarter and more productive through the use of innovative artificial intelligence and software. That's great. And um, what role does AI play in the testing market in general? But it's kind of difficult to quantify, but it comes really in two categories. And I call those categories, the category of speed and the category of precision. Now, speed is kind of within the realm of, you know what you need to do, or you've kind of got an idea where you need to go and you just need to be better at it, to be faster at it, to be able to do more of it. That's speeding you up at a task that you've already got a pretty good knowledge as to how you're going to do it. And in this space, artificial intelligence really is about trying to enable you to build more tests or to heal your tests. So building more is kind of you're doing the test, but you're doing it faster. Healing test is instead of you having to maintain the test, having a machine that's able to say, well, something's changed. I'm going to adapt the test in some way to be able to adapt to that change. And another area is enable you to make more tests. So to expand the amount of tests that you would have ordinarily done manually and automate those tests. So building more automation. Within here, there's two really, I, I guess, primary benefits that we've seen. The first one is within the realm of self-healing. This is an obvious benefit, you know, not spending time uh, trying to update the test. You're having an artificial intelligence update it for you, saves you time on maintaining your automated tests. And the other is in the realm of uh, visual artificial intelligence. So this is expanding out the scope of what could be automated so that you're no longer dealing with just, you know, your typical you know, web and mobile and API, but you've got other systems that are difficult to automate, difficult to access. And normally you would have had to test those manually, slowing you down. So to speed you up, we have been researching artificial intelligences to allow those to be automated. So that's part one, that's in speed. Part two is in precision. So this is really about targeting and focusing. You've got a lot of a lot of noise out there in the software development world. And I've got an analogy for this one, actually. Here is um, my set of noise cancelling headphones that um, have been duct taped because my kids uh, thought they would be a fun thing to swing on. <laughs> but those noise cancelling headphones enabled me to block out the somewhat significant noise from having five kids in the house. Not all of it, but, you know, a decent amount of that noise. And that allows me to focus on the task at hand. And in a similar way, a good testing AI 
consumes all of the noise of your systems. What are the things that are changing? Where are the bugs? What are the you know changes to dev code and environments? And consuming in all of that noise and just funneling through to you the thing that makes sense, the, the recommendation. Focus on this area because of all this stuff in the environment telling me that this is the most likely area that something's changed. So that's the precision enabling you to focus in. And really the target area for us here has been in impact analysis, which really is analyze all that change, all that noise and figure out what's changed and show that to the, to the user in a way that makes sense to them, that they can focus. So taking all that into account, uh, how does Tricentis approach AI? So Tricentis' approach to AI has been one of uh, strategic investment. We're really trying to uh, look at areas where we can use artificial intelligence to accelerate our, um, our users, our customers. And so we need to be uh, fairly judicious with how we invest in um, artificial intelligence. And an investment in AI comes usually in three categories. You've got um, invention or innovation. That's where you're creating stuff through internal research. You've got acquisition. So someone's already done something and you go buy them. And then there's integration. There's an AI out there. We want our products to integrate it to be able to gain the benefit of it. We've focused primarily on internal research and acquisition. So recently we um, acquired a company called Testim and their whole gem, their main idea was just to enable you to be really fast, fast authoring, self-healing, getting the tests up and running fast, keeping them running with little maintenance effort. It really gelled well with Tricenter's mission of speeding up our customers. And it brought in a lot of the advanced self-healing AI capabilities that were present in the market. On the internal research side, we've been focusing on visual artificial intelligence and impact analysis. Um, visual artificial intelligence is really about trying to shift that testing left and expand its horizons. So that's about looking at an application and instead of seeing the, the technology like web and divs and spans and whatnot else, you see what a human would see, tables and drop downs and inputs. And the advantage of that is there's no fundamental difference from a visual point of view between a mock-up of an application and the real application. And from a testing perspective, what this enables you to do is as soon as you've got that, that mock-up ready, you can build tests against that mock-up. And you can run them against the mock-up. It's right. It may not fully execute because the mock-up isn't an actual application. Your tests are probably going to fail which is actually how TDD works. You build your tests and they're failing. But now the developers can build the application and run the tests at the same time. And once the app is ready, without needing to change the test, the test will start passing because they see no difference between the mock-up and the real application. So you built tests before the app was ready. So instead of having testing as this block at the end that happens after the app is done and delays your time to go live, you've now moved that testing to the beginning so that you're ready to go sooner, which is kind of unheard of in the user interface automation space. The final um, area where Tricentis is approaching artificial intelligence from an investment point of view is impact analysis, which we talked a bit about earlier, but it really is about consuming huge volumes, gigabytes and gigabytes, hundreds of gigabytes of data. And spitting out of that, these are the things that have changed. And instead of uh, needing to run all 10,000 tests that you have in your regression suite, impact analysis is about saying, because of this change, these are the most important ones for you to run. So you might be looking at hundreds instead of thousands of tests that need to run, which is really massive from a time-saving point of view. So I guess in summary, artificial intelligence from Tricentis point of view remains a strategic and critical investment point throughout the future. Absolutely. And um, can you give us some examples of real life AI and testing? Yeah, sure. So I'm going to give examples. Sorry. I'm going to give examples from our customer base that have used artificial intelligence, uh, that specifically the ones that we've provided to gain benefits. So the first is a bank in Australia that is using uh, the vision AI, the visual artificial intelligence to build their test before the app is ready. So their developers create the tests, they um, build them all up against a Figma mock-up. Figma is a design and prototyping tool. And then they just sort of park them until the development is nearly complete. And then they start running them and they run with very, very little change against the actual application. 
because they're using AI to execute instead of you know trying to find specific elements and specific controls, which means that it's very easy for them to get their test built before their dev, and it speeds up their dev cycles by you know instead of it taking three days at the end of a sprint, it might take half a day at the end of a sprint, which is massive from an agile point of view. And the other one is um, impact analysis. We have a lot of examples of this on our website, but Coca-Cola is a good one. Um, they have a very large regression testing library and they're feeding all that information from their SAP systems into what's called live compare or impact analysis. And that means that the, the recommendations that are spat out from impact analysis saying, here are areas where you need to focus, here are gaps, here are um, highlights. That allows them to reduce their regression testing efforts in, in terms of real effort reduction. It's about 30 to 40 percent, which is a huge amount of effort reduction on a company the size of Coca-Cola. So those two areas, I guess, the visual artificial intelligence and the impact analysis, kind of the highlights. But almost all of our customers um, are using the self-healing artificial intelligence in one way or another to make sure that their maintenance burdens have been lowered. So all three of these areas I talked about at the beginning actually have practical real life application to customers today. Absolutely great to see it in action. And just to finish off, what would you say is the future of AI and testing? So AI and testing is going to go in one of two ways. And I'm going to bias the result here by saying that I subscribe to the second of the two. The first way is what's known as fully autonomous. And that, the idea of that is kind of like a fully autonomous car. You get in, you say, I want to go here. The car takes you there. And it does everything, navigates, it deals with the traffic, it avoids other cars, reacts to drivers on the road, and picks the route for you. And in the testing analogy, this is a bit like saying that um, you don't need to test your app. You get an AI, it comes and it sits in front of your app, it shakes the app, it reads the requirements, figures out what it needs to test, it then does the test and tells you your app is ready to go or your app is not. Now that may happen, but I think that's sort of like artificial intelligence singularity levels of AI are required in order to get us there because we can't even really sit down intelligent testers in front of an app and say, go forth and test the app. It takes a lot of onboarding and it takes a lot of experience and time and interaction with the rest of the team to be able to build up a solid understanding and be able to really validate the app's business logic. So that's an, that's an area that's being pushed a lot in the market at the moment. I don't think it's realistic that we're going there. I think what's far more realistic and is actually happening now is augmented artificial intelligence. And this is where you can imagine an AI being a bit like a smart assistant. Um, for those of you that watched Iron Man, like Jarvis, the, the one that he talks to, and its role is very similar to that. It's sort of those that noise cancelling, that filtering of saying, all right, you give me a task and I'm going to do part of it for you. I think that will happen. Like if you say, build me a test to get from here to there, it'll probably be able to navigate your app and figure things out and maybe come up with some ideas for what tests should be run. But at the end of the day, it really needs to be guided by a human when it comes down to the decisions. Like, you know, what is the, is this result correct is a good decision that humans are probably going to make. Um, which, which of these paths is more important? How do I discover new tests? What do I do with these different fields? These are things that a human is probably going to need to tell the AI. But I think the change that I see from an AI in testing point of view is going to be more towards humans providing context and experience and the AI providing the kind of hands and typing is that that's kind of where I see the, the future of AI and testing going. For sure. Some great food for thought there. Look, thanks so much for joining us today, um, Dave, and we really look forward to hearing more from Tricentis and uh, more expert opinions in the future. No problem. Thanks for having me.